Okay, so today I want to talk to you guys about vertical reflections of functions and then afterwards also horizontal reflections of functions. Let's start with the vertical though. So uh, you talked about vertical reflections as well last year when you dealt with parabolas. So for example, if we have a parent function, f of x is equal to x squared, that's our parent parabola, then we know that we can vertically reflect that. Okay, and the vertical reflection of that parabola would look something like that. And it would have the equation g of x is equal to negative x squared. So essentially all you really had to do to get the uh, reflected version would be to multiply your function f of x by negative 1 essentially, right? So you just multiply the entire thing by negative 1. That basically means that uh, all the y values that were positive become negative and all the y values that were negative become positive, uh, which flips the function upside down. Okay. Well, this will also work for other kinds of parent functions. So, for example, if we take a look at the square root function again, so our parent square root function, f of x is equal to the square root of x, we can reflect that vertically as well. Okay. It'll give us something that looks like that. It's just been flipped upside down. And just like we did with the parabola, all you need to do to get that is to multiply the entire thing by negative 1, which gives you g of x is equal to negative the square root of x. Okay, so again, all the y values that were positive become negative and vice versa. Okay, so in general for vertical reflections, so in general, this is going to be our rule. If we have f of x, which is a parent function, then if we want to vertically reflect that, we're going to get a function g of x, which is just taking f of x and multiplying it by negative 1. You're going to see it as g of x is equal to negative f of x. That will be uh, the function that describes any vertical reflection. Okay. So now let's take a look at horizontal reflections of functions. Now, horizontal reflections, they're a little bit harder to refer to from what you guys know from last year because if you were to try to horizontally reflect a parabola, for example, it would look exactly the same. So I'm not going to take this one and base it on the parabola. Let's take a look at our square root function again. So there's our uh, parent square root function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. And let's see what would happen when we horizontally reflect it. Well, it's going to look like this, right? So it's going to be pointing to the left as opposed to the right. And the function is going to be g of x is equal to the square root of negative x, okay? So in this case, what you're doing is you're taking the x that was in your parent function and you're replacing it with negative x, okay? And that is going to reflect your function horizontally. So replacing x with negative x reflects the, the, the function horizontally. Okay, so in general, for horizontal reflections, if, again, f of x is a parent function, then g of x is equal to f of negative x is a horizontal reflection of f of x. So again, you just to get g of x is a horizontal reflection, you take your function, your parent function f, and you replace x with negative x, and that will be a horizontal reflection. So this has been horizontal and vertical reflections of functions. Hope it helps.